Greetings and welcome to Legacies of Wavern, Lore of the Endowment. This will be chapter 39 of this reading. Several days went by, and that damn holiday, Christmas Day, finally came. Stupid holidays. I hate humans. I also hated the Donoviches, with the wife barking at her husband in the kitchen for not cooking the way she wanted him to. I sometimes wonder if anger will engulf my other emotions, then eventually engulf itself when nothing becomes worthy of being hated. Somewhere in the morning, don't get me started with the fact that I don't care, I went to watch TV, but ignored what was on. Overhearing Koju's and Kalita's argument was more interesting. At the same time, Fox continued to confess to Wolf, but of course, Wolf wouldn't listen. Even though the god wolves were arguing, Kalita was trying to disturb her brother by centrally rubbing up against him, while also trying to calm him down by kissing him every now and then. Though I gave my false attention to the TV, Wolf was actually placing all of her attention on the god wolves as she asked me, My lord, what is it with those two? What do you mean? Kalita seems completely in love with Koju. Aren't they supposed to be siblings or something? Dunno, and don't care. Nanye's ears twitched as she glanced at the two god wolves, then looked over at Wolf and replied, Well, from what I've learned, deities don't have to worry about muddying their blood, unlike mortals. Plus, it's part of their canon to not lust for those outside their realm. Wolf's ears bent back, while her right stood up a little more than her left, while she said, Weird. He begged turned back to watch the news and continued, Although, picking her brother's enough, Nanye, I barked, very irritated as I raised my right hand slightly to flick it. I then let my right hand drop and continued, I was already disturbed before. I don't need to have nightmares later. Now shut up. A husky Becky giggled, then after overhearing us, Joey stated, Honestly, sounds kind of cute. However, before the Becky dared to respond, the Kexan man was quickly slapped by his Alakan's wife, then went back to making his food for his wife and himself. I glanced over at the TV as I pointed my right-hand fingers at it and said, I'm trying to watch TV. I thought you hated the news, Wolf asked, staring at me with slight confusion. I motioned to get myself a soda while I said, It's the only damn thing I can stand that's on. When I opened the can, I turned to watch Kalita rub her head up against her brother's neck as she said, Come on, brother. Please stay. You'll like it here on Earth. Besides, he's a lot nicer than he seems. That's not my reason for leaving, Koju said, acting as if unaffected by what his sister was doing. I can't stand to see you like this. You're serving a mortal that has no power over you. I moved back onto the couch, trying to sit in between Wolf and Nanye, but they shoved me onto my back again, almost making me spill my soda. I love my soda. I might punch them. Kalita pushed her upper back against her brother's chest and said, That's not how I see it. What do you... Never mind. I don't want to know. Even you'd be amazed at it. What? Damn it, Kalita. Koji moved back from her to stop his sister from touching him and continued, Quit doing that. Just make sense of what you speak. I hate it when you put bad thoughts into my head. Kalita swung around to face her brother and calmly said, Come on, Koju. You know I meant about his true powers. So don't get all uppity about it. Besides, you know you like it when I act like this. Damn it, no I don't. And you know I don't. I'm sick of it. Either you explain yourself right now, or I'll- Yo what, Koju? Kalita barked, finally becoming angry. Just shut your mouth right now, because nothing you say will ever happen. All you do is sit there and talk down to all these mortals, like the ignorant ass that you are. But the truth is, you talk because you can't back it up. 
You're just as weak as them, Koju. And that's what makes me sick. Koju stood against his sister and viciously yelled, How dare you speak out against me, dog? Because I can, mutt, she yelled as she stood against him as well. You need a reality check, Kalita. These mortals, especially Raiken, don't have what it takes to survive. And this endowment doesn't stand a chance against either Halen or the Dominion. You need to lighten up, Koju. Just because you're a god doesn't mean you have to be strict about it. Besides, you've been living by the old canon for far too long. You need to grow up and change. Koju gave a vicious snarl as he took a step forward with his left front paw, slamming it down as he said, Don't you ever demand me to do anything against my rule. My Kanan is fine, and I will never change it, nor anything else about myself. Kalita gave the same expression at her brother as she took a step forward and said, Then that makes you no less ignorant than the most illiterate being in this galaxy. That's it! Koju jolted towards Kalita and bit down on the right side of her neck, making her give out a loud yelp as he slammed her down onto the floor. They tumbled once, then Koju moved to stand over Kalita as he held her down tight. She quickly moved her back legs in to kick him off and across the room to the right side, with his fangs slicing a bit of her skin out. Then she stood back up and shot a couple blasts of energy through her mouth at him. Koju dodged the blast and was getting ready to shoot one of his own, but I quickly motioned up and turned to them as I yelled, Knock it off, you two! If you're going to fight, go fight somewhere else! With that, I began coughing again as I leaned forward and raised my right hand to my mouth to keep my blood from spraying out. Though Kalita had stopped, Koju decided to attack me with the blast instead. However, his sister blocked it with the blade of a broadsword. She had created the sword purely from her own energy, yet had a simple physical appearance as she gripped the hilt in between her teeth and angled the blade up at where she blocked her brother's attack. Kalita swung the sword across to her left side and had it hover just over her back, growling for a moment. Then she said, My lord is right, brother. Koju became even more angry when he heard those words from his own sister, and it only grew as she continued. If you wish to settle this right now, then you and I will go somewhere where we can end this struggle between us without harming any of my lord's friends. Though I knew Koju hated the thought of that idea, he knew that if he didn't acknowledge it, he was going to get a beatdown from everyone else in the room. Even as one of the most powerful gods in existence, there was no way Koju could stand up against two other gods, excluding his sister, and against a large handful of well-trained and powerful mortals at once. Koju amazingly calmed down, but only slightly, then slowly headed out through the balcony door on the right side of the room as he said, Very well then, as you wish, we'll continue this outside, just down the street. Just as her brother jumped off the balcony, Kalita followed him out, yet before she walked past the sliding door, the goddess stopped and looked back at me and said, You will defeat Dominic, my lord. I know you will. I saw it in my dreams, far before you were even born. When the god wolf left, everyone moved out to the balcony to watch the fight. I mean, we had to see this. There wasn't going to be anything better than a battle between two gods, regardless of the danger we could have all been in just from their presence. However, Baraku decided not to do so and continued sleeping on my desk. We noticed JJ was off to the left side and out of the park to watch the fight as well, which I found strange. The two gods stepped into Central Park, Koju farther from us in the center and Kalita opposite of him and about 30 feet apart. Both just staring each other down, they got ready to start up their fight. 
They force their energy to gather and flare around their bodies, raising some of the dirt and rubble around them slightly. It was a majestic sight for nearly everyone's eyes, be as it may that they were gods. Even so, just to see anyone like this was a great sight that no one should miss. Though I fought my siblings because of differences, I still found it heartbreaking to even see two people of same blood fight against each other. They were family. What reason do they have to fight to the death for? But I guess if you disowned them, or yourself from them, then they wouldn't really be family anymore now. Would they? Oh well. I just wish I could have had some time to explain everything to Koju. While we watched Koju and Kalita from the balcony, dark clouds hovered above with vicious lightning and thunder as the rain began to pour down once more. The wind was blowing lightly, but would grow into a fierce struggle to topple the buildings over, then it would calm back down every so often. The ground was soaked with Earth's tears, and its people trying so hard to stand tall against Earth's voice. Though they ignored it, as moronic humans they were, I was listening, very clearly. Earth hated having to watch its inhabitants fight amongst themselves, be it of its own or new arrivals. However, I was loving it. It gave me joy to know how Earth felt, miserable and tormented. I could feel it as if it was a part of me. Earth was in pain. After about a minute of both gods standing there, Kalita called out, Last chance, brother. Just give it up. There's no need for us to fight. There is for me, sister, Koju said. You stood against me when I wished to never help a world that would fall against its own empire. You stood against me when I told you to never tell mortals what you can predict. He then raised his voice and yelled, you stood against me when I told you to never allow any mortal to own you. And now look what you've become. You're nothing more than a worthless mortal in my eyes. You want to know why I stood against you, Koju? She yelled. Because you demanded me to do everything. I hated that. I hated being ordered by my own damn brother. So I stood against you to prove that you could never tell me what to do. I stood by my own Kanan, not yours. Koju growled, then calmly said, Very well then, Kalita. I guess that's it. He then charged a large amount of energy into his mouth as he said, Let's end this. Koju aimed for the ground just in front of him and shot out a quick surge of bright white energy. It took only a few seconds for the surge to end, then two small double-edged energy swords struck up and stood with just the tips still stuck in the ground. Both blades were pitch black, but the hilts were brightly shining white, while the small hand guards shined pearlescent with the same colors of the wolf's eyes. The wolf god took a step back with both of his left paws and turned his head to his left side then swung his head forward and raised his snout to the sky to face the dark clouds above. He gave out a loud and elegant howl, able to echo throughout the planet. It gave me goosebumps, because it was so... magnificent. The two swords grew a bit in size and shot up about 30 feet, then they dazzled as they fell back down. They hovered just over Koju's back to have the hilts facing forward while out from his sides. Koju lowered his head and looked back at his sister and said, Farewell, my sibling, Kalita. And to be honest, I loved you with all of my heart and soul, but I will not let you disgrace the gods this way. Fair enough, Kalita said. My sibling, Koju, as you know, I loved you too. But I will not let you force your old way of life onto anyone ever again, even if I die here. Happily staring down at the two wolves, I asked, 
graceful, aren't they? My family and friends just turned and looked at me, confused, then glanced between each other for a moment before moving their attention back to the gods. Oju and Kalita readied themselves in an attack stance as their aura flared wildly, nearly out of control. Thunder gave a loud and vicious crash through the clouds. Then the fight began. The two wolves jolted towards each other and struck with all their might, clashing their weapons, fangs, and claws. Their fight was glorious. Absolutely beautiful. I would have expected nothing less with gods. It made me shed a few tears of joy to watch them fight. Fought nearly everywhere within the city. They broke through buildings, crushed vehicles, tore apart the streets, and even ripped the air right out of the sky with their hits. What I was told was true, at least from what I saw. Even as they fought against each other, Koju and Kalita were far more powerful together than when they were apart. They were fierce, unbelievably fast and powerful thought there was no way I could match them, even in my enhanced state. As the fight went on, their powers continued to grow at an alarming rate. Their energy seemed endless and their strength had no bounds. Even with me being the endowment and how powerful I could be, I felt like nothing just by simply watching this fight break out. Three minutes into the fight, the sound of their clashes grew louder. It became greater and began rattling the windows and forcing the ground to shake. It even made some of my hairs stand on ends. In some parts of Koju's and Kalita's fight, they used their swords by gripping them in their teeth and swinging the blades with their head and neck. Other parts they would just fight like normal wolves. However, they were incredibly more vicious than normal. There were some odd parts where one of them would use their tail as a whip where they'd kick with one of their back legs. Sometimes I'd see one of them use their tail to hold their sword, swing it around at the other. But even with my eyes, most of the time all I could get was a glimpse of them fighting in one area. Then they would teleport or quickly jolt to another location almost completely out of sight. Another minute passed and I started to hear the two continue to talk amongst each other while they fought wildly within the Central Park area. Damn it, Kalita! Koju yelled. Just give up! I don't want to hurt you! Then give up your old ways, Koju! Kalita yelled. I'm sick of you pretending to be like Dungre. You and I both know he was an ass and a fool from the beginning. How dare you speak ill of our father, you mongrel. Shut it, mutt. Saw Kalita use her powers for a moment, slashing her sword at her brother in a very powerful downward motion. Koji tried to brace his two swords up and block her attack, yet his sisters broke through and shattered both of his swords, along with destroying her own. Kalita continued her motion and lunged forward, where she grasped Koju by his throat with her fangs and slammed him into the ground from about 35 feet, pinning him in the center of the park. They rolled a few feet, then she threw him forward with all her might. Koju was struck into a small building off to the right side of the park, with Kalita bracing her right leg against the ground to halt from sliding sideways. She turned towards her brother to charge a surge of energy into her mouth, bracing her footage again before firing it. The blast she created had a foot wide black core that was surrounded by an 11 foot large white layer, with several black strips of lightning swarming around the outside. It was so powerful it melted the ground away from it. Even the force it took for Kalita to fire the blast pushed her back about a foot from where she stood, grinding dirt within her claws. After a few seconds, the wolf stopped her attack and became exhausted, slightly hunching over and panting heavily. However, even with that powerful blast, 
Her brother stood from the wreckage, his body steaming because of the blast. He calmly walked out into the street with a smile on his face, acting as if nothing had happened as he chuckled, then stood just a few feet past the sidewalk from the building he was thrown into. Koju smiled at his sister, then said, That tickled. But I digress. The steam stopped as he sat down and gave a blank stare. Then he continued, Now that you're starting to get serious, I'm not going to hold back. I'm through playing games with you. I've tried to set you straight, tried to keep you on my side, but no, you wouldn't let me. You wanted to do whatever you felt was pleasing to you and you alone. He then started to slowly move closer to his sister, as if he was stalking a prey, and said, So go ahead. Defy me one more time. Use your true powers against me. Break another etiquette of my canon. You might as well. You defied all the others. Stay back, Koju. Kalita barked, trying to back away from her brother. What's stopping you, Kalita? You've never listened to a word I've said before. So why should you start now? Damn it, Koju. I said. She raised her left paw a bit, then slammed it down as she shouted, Stay back. A large stalagmite struck up in front of Koju and stabbed him through the chest. However, he was unaffected by it, yet did stop walking. He grew a big smile as he chuckled once more, then took another step with his right front paw to force himself forward, breaking away the spike that pierced his body from the ground. Koju's body absorbed the dirt that the spike was created out of and rejuvenated while he said, Don't bother with those simple tricks. You won't win with that strategy. Persistent jackass. Kalita then raised her voice as she channeled more of her energy to flare from her body and yelled, I'll show you. The goddess hopped up to stand on her hind legs for a moment, then slammed her front paws down to rattle the ground and forced her bright yellow aura to spiral outward about two feet from her body. She also jerked her head to her right side and swung it forward and up to give out a quick graceful howl. Large bolt of lightning came down from the clouds to strike and engulf the wolf's body into its light, and as fast as it came, the lightning was gone, with a new creature standing before Koju. A fierce yet magnificent creature. Kaleida had changed into an even larger wolf of her former self. Her fur was now dark purple, with white at her underbelly and on her paws. It was now thin black majestic markings around her face that went over her eyes, snout, and to the back of her ears. Her collar changed from being a simple white nylon collar to a large platinum metal chain that had a large black crystal hanging from it, kind of like a dog tag. She also had three gold circular earrings on the upper right side of her right ear and two on the outer center of her left along with long silver bracelets clamped tight at the bottom of her arms, just above each of her paws. Last was a bit strange. There was a thin red ribbon tied around the center of her tail, which had a special symbol hanging from it that I identified as something from the ancients. It took me a moment to try and remember where I had seen it before, then realized two things. It was recognized as a symbol for a connection to infinite power and abilities, being the main emblem for something called the Otoka Amgata. In fact, it was the same symbol of a medallion. My wife's medallion. I couldn't believe I didn't realize it until now. Once the goddess had transformed, she lowered her head and looked back over at her brother with a blank gaze. When she spoke, her voice sounded as if it was echoing in from a distance around us. Well, brother, 
Kalina said. Unless you break one of your own cannons, you won't have a chance at defeating me in that pathetic state. Koju was not impressed. Instead, he was even more angry at his sister and said, Well, sister, you've won. You've not only torn yourself completely from the Canaan, but you've forced me to tear myself from it as well. Showing our true form was the last of things I would ever do in the mortal realm. But you leave me with no choice. If I am to stop you from interfering with these mortals any further, then I must bring forth my true powers as well. The wolf god growled as he channeled his aura to flare from his body, then yelled, I won't have my own damn siblings stand against me any longer. The ground below the wolf broke apart and burst up lava from underneath, completely engulfing his body. In two seconds, the lava drained back underground, once again leaving behind another amazing creature to stand. With lava dripping from his fur, Koju had also changed into his true form. And what a sight it was. He was slightly bigger than his sister, but a small portion of it was his fur. It was black with blood red around his paws, along with midnight blue highlights around his mane and on the last three inches of his tail. He too had very interesting mystic markings, but they were around his back and face as they shined lime green. He also had a large white leather bands, each strapped around his neck, wrists, ankles, and at the base of his tail. All were studded with silver on the edges and spiked in the center with gold. Last was that he had one thick metallic black ring at the tip of his left ear on the outer side, with a thin bright yellow line in the center. Koju spiked up his tail, while his voice echoed in as well as he said, Let this be our final stand, dog. You're dead, pup. Kalita responded. And just like that, their bout continued. Both fought even faster and stronger than before, making it impossible to see where they were. Their clashes just as loud, if not louder, than before and more powerful. At one point, a loud crash came from Central Park. I looked down and saw Koju and Kalita standing about 10 feet from each other. Both looked exhausted and seemed unable to hold themselves up much longer. They also had hundreds of cuts and gashes along their bodies, with blood nearly pouring from each wound. Yet as badly as they had made themselves, I knew this was only the start of things. Just as I was able to see them again, Koji gave a loud and vicious snarl as he struggled to stand up. Afterwards, he jolted towards Kalita to strike her. However, she moved to just barely miss him from her right side and turned to bite down hard on his neck, then motioned to slam her brother into the ground. She forced him onto his left side, quickly releasing her grip on his neck and holding him down with just her left paw, giving a mean glare. In her position, Kalita said, Give it up, Koju. At this rate, the only way you'll ever win is if you destroy yourself in the process. Koju struggled a bit to try and push his sister away, so he looked up at her and said, Don't think I won't resort to that if it comes down to it, Kalita. Kalita motioned to bite her brother again, but Koju dodged the strike and quickly rolled to his right side to lie on his back where he pushed his sister off with his hind legs as she was nearing. He stood himself up and charged a massive amount of energy into his mouth for an attack, while his sister quickly recovered and motioned to counter at about 35 feet. As they both charged their energy, the ground started to rattle and the air began to rise, and the rain hovered in place around the city. Some even felt they were going to float off the ground without warning. Koju and Kalita aimed and fired their surges of energy at each other as both called out in incantation. Zenkai! Koju shouted. 
At the same time, Kalita shouted, Bogara! The blast grew over 20 feet big and collided with such force that both wolves were pushed back several feet, while a shockwave blew out and shattered some nearby glass, including our hotel windows. The two gods struggled to push against the other's attack, but after a few seconds the Zenkai technique was able to slowly push away the Bogaro. Koju's blast pushed far enough to just be three feet away from his sister. Then Kalita curled her tail over her back to aim the tip of it towards his attack. A symbol tied to her spun wildly, each ring going in opposite directions as it flashed bright orange. Then a translucent orange barrier appeared around her body. She cancelled out her own attack, allowing her brother's blast to continue forward and strike the barrier. However, just as it struck, it was cancelled out as well, but it shattered the barrier along with it. Kalita had a few more wounds rip open, and a large amount of her blood burst out from her body, nearly draining her completely of her energy and strength to stand her own ground. It was then when nature continued on its way and poured the rain down throughout the city, while gravity returned to everyone around watching. When his sister fell onto her stomach, Koju stumbled to walk over and give her one last farewell. But to mine and everyone else's amazement, Kalita gave one last defiance against her brother. She stood, hunched over, and struggled to hold herself up moving to raise her tail as she gave out a loud and vicious snarl. Koju stopped about five feet from his sister and said, If you had just lived by our kingdom, sister, then you wouldn't be suffering right now. Please, let me help you. I don't want to see you like this anymore. You don't have to deal with this pain any longer than you already have. Kalita didn't respond. Instead, while standing in the center of the dirt area as she faced the hotel, she looked up at me and quieted herself. Koju grew a bit angry from his sister's reaction and said, Don't bother with them, Kalita. Their fates are sealed. You might as well let me help you keep you alive to carry out our race. Together. Isn't that what you want? To live a life with the one you dream of. Kalita gave a smile as she laughed for a few seconds, then looked back at her brother and just continued laughing. After another few seconds, she calmed down and said, Sorry, Koju, but, but you, you are, are never, never in my dreams. Because, uh, being your sibling, I don't have to. She jerked her head down. She coughed up a small portion of blood, then looked back up at her brother and continued, It's true. I'm madly in love with you, but in my dreams, I see peace. She coughed for a few more seconds, then continued, I see Lord Zayek Rankinshu, the don't, having shattered the very fabric of reality that you once knew. My Lord has made this realm something not just for himself, but for everyone else to live in. Together, as one big family. A life of true peace. Nonsense, Kalita. Koju said, growing angrier. No mortal can obtain that goal. So stop what you're doing and come back home with me. Kalita laughed again, then looked back up at me and said, Your home isn't mine anymore, Koju and you are no longer a part of my family. With her next words, I couldn't understand if she was still talking to Koju, or if she was somehow talking to me. But the goddess continued, Just remember, once you've seen it, power, skill, technique, it doesn't matter. It will be forever engraved within your soul. That is who they were once before. That's how they made you. And that is how you shall carry out their next generation, expanding off into the new territory. Koju looked at his sister, confused, and asked, What are you saying? You will be 
become what no you will one thought possible. What no one thought possible. You, you will be surprised how powerful one can You'll become see. with just a simple technique. And you will be surprised as to how powerful one can become with just a simple technique. Enough! Coach Bart. It's over. I'm done trying to help you. He then hopped up to stand on his hind legs as he charged for one last attack through his mouth while he shouted Zen Kai with that the wolf god slammed his front paws back down and fired his blast at his sibling to destroy Before Kodu's final attack, Kalita sat down and calmly said, Goodbye, Ray. Then, as she stared up at me with a graceful smile, she was obliterated. I lowered my hand, yet continued watching the area where the wolves once were, while I sarcastically said, Merry Christmas, Koju, from all of us mortals. I then changed my expression to a blank stare and continued, stuck up fuck. With a light sigh, Nanya said, that's a shame. Serena said nothing, just reached for her medallion with one hand and filled it with it for turning her head slightly, barely looking in my direction. I stood silent for a moment, thinking about the fight and its conclusion, then said to myself, I need a cold shower. After a while, Serena and Nanye went back inside as well, yet before I turned to follow, I stopped for a moment and saw JJ. He casually walked back into the center of the park and stood there staring up at the sky with his arms crossed over his chest. I wondered about his reason for being there. Then I just shrugged my shoulders as I turned away to head inside too. I took off my coat, tossed it over onto my desk chair, barely missing Baraku with it. Well, I said, I pray that I don't get any more surprises. Immediately after that, I heard my car's engine roar through the streets below as Serena announced, the goons are back. As I motioned to lay back on the couch by myself, I thought, figures, nothing I can say or think of to work in my favor can ever be what I want it to be. Has to be the exact opposite. It took a few minutes, but Amber and Joel busted through the front door, voices yelling and very much angry, while they stomped through the room doing whatever they pleased. However, Blight flew over to me as Wolf and Nanya got me to lie in their laps again, with me staring up at the ceiling with my eyes half open. Once Blight flew over to me, he said, Dude, have you seen how Ember drives? Don't care, Blight, I said. But of course, it didn't matter to him that I didn't care, even the slightest. Man, you should have been there. Amber's insane. She cuts through traffic like a hot knife through warm butter. She rams others as if sheets of glass. She's... She's... Fucking awesome. It's amazing. Then calmed down slightly and asked, Why don't you drive that way? Go away, but... I lightly coughed, but afterwards I continued, Go away, Blight. Hey, man. Blight moved to hover a foot away from the right side of my face and continued, What's up with you? You don't look so good. Don't worry. It's nothing. Nothing? Blight then raised his voice and yelled, Nothing? Damn it, Ray. What happened? 
What did you do? Who did you kill? Why am I yelling? And why is the park no longer where it should be? I looked over at the annoying ball of energy that never shuts the hell up, confused, and asked, What did you call me? Shut up, he bluntly said, ignoring my question. He then asked, What happened? I turned away to look up at the ceiling again, thinking what he said was nothing, and replied, Serena will explain it to you. Go talk to her. Don't dump him on me, my wife barked. Is that? Blight randomly threw out, I am always hungry. I must always be fed. The finger I touch will soon turn red. What am I? Leave me be, Blight. The ball hovered for a few seconds in silence, then in disappointment said, Very well, my lord. Good day. As Blight flew away, I replied, Fire. Correct! He joyfully barked just as he reached my wife. It was too bad Kalita was gone. I wish she could have stayed with us, but even if I wanted to interfere, there was nothing I could do, nor anyone else could do. It was a real shame. However, we all got over it and figured if that's how Koju was going to be, then he was no less an enemy than father was. If we saw him again, we would make sure to break all four of his legs and force him to walk home. This concludes the reading of chapter 39. Thank you all for watching and listening. If you like what you've seen and heard, there'll be a link to my physical works in the description below. With that being said, stay safe, take care, and we'll see you again next week, reading chapter 40.